Today we're installing a Samsung mini split on this Avion travel trailer. This is going to be an interesting project because we have not done this before. So I'm excited to show you the before. I'm excited to show you the after. And I'll give you some details about the installation just in case you're wondering how we do it. You're watching HVAC Tips for Homeowners. I'm Tad and today we're going to learn how to install a mini split on an Avion travel trailer. Before we start the video, before I give you a tour inside, before we install this mini split, hit the like button, subscribe, smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. And if you want help with your project, click the join button, become a member. Let me know in the comments when you joined. I'll give you my email. That can lead to contact with me. Let's go inside and take a look. Anybody home? Hey, <laughs> how are you, Tad? I'm Carolyn. I'm great. excited about today. This is my 31 foot 1976 refurbished Avion LeGrand. That's awesome. And I live here full time, and Tad is going to give me some wonderful heat and air. Awesome, man. So we can take a look around? <laughs> sure, sure. Great. All right, so let's take a look. This is the front of the Avion trailer, and this right here is where we're going to mount the indoor air handler this is where the wall mounts going to go and this is super nice very creative <laughs> and how long have you been living here i've been here about a month and a half now wow yeah. and the experience has it been good it's very good it's my first glamping experience well, it's beautiful, I can say. Uh, and it came up from Florida, so Tennessee, although I'm familiar with it, is a little more challenging when it comes to tiny living like this. It's very nice. Very thank nice. You, thank you. I love it. Her name's Destiny. Oh, really? Yes. That is excellent. <laughs> so, very excellent. All right. Thank you for the little tour. You're welcome. So now let's go over the installation, how we're going to run the line sets, the drain, where everything's going to come out, where the placement of the outdoor unit's going to be, the power, and all that good stuff before we get started. So right here where this lamp is, is where our line sets are going to go in. And then over here is where our drain is going to go in for our wall mount air handler. We're going to remove all of this so that you can actually see where we're running our line sets and our drain. And we're gonna go outside and take a look at where we're gonna mount our outdoor unit now. We are going to drill a hole and we're gonna come out with our line sets and our drain somewhere over here. And we're gonna have line height cover. That way our line sets are covered with something. And then our outdoor unit is gonna mount right here. So outdoor units here and then our box our electrical box is over there so what we're going to do is we're going to get schedule 80 conduit to come out of that box over against this railing and that is how we're going to do our electrical we're going to mount our disconnect box somewhere right here taking these cabinet doors off this is where I'll, we'll run our line sets and our drain got to get a hole saw so we can Drill a hole right here, and then down here, we'll drill another hole there. This is exciting. Running the conduit into the disconnect. This is all schedule 80 because it's above ground, so perfect. This right here is schedule 40. This right here is Schedule 80. So put it up next to it. You can see the thickness of the Schedule 80. It's much thicker than Schedule 40. And anything that's above ground, you have to have Schedule 80. This was half inch. This right here is three quarter. And you can see this is Schedule 40. And then right here is Schedule 80. So you can see the thickness. See the change in thickness there. This Schedule 80 is much thicker. Got a sweep right here. All right, there's the indoor air handler. I'm gonna take this radio out so we have more room to work. And since this is at an angle, 
Once we set the unit up here, we won't have proper drainage. We have an evaporator pan that holds the water and then the drain that's supposed to drain to the exterior. But with the unit setting like this, you'd have water pouring out of the pan. So somehow we're gonna have to make this to where it's recessed and it's level and it's going to be good for proper drainage. So I'm gonna take this out. Got some unusual heads for these screws. Kind of looks like a square head. So, okay, let's get to work. <laughs> cut out a couple boards, got the radio so that we can cut the wires and use some wire nuts. Circular saw. So we wanna have as much room above the unit as possible. So we're gonna cut this right here out and we're gonna use a Sawzall and just cut right here and then cut right here and then take that strip out and then take these four Phillips screws out, five Phillips screws, and that will give us room for the air to pull through the return. So it returns right there. Okay. So that's our hole cover. Cool. Progress update, wall mount air handler is mounted. We need four inches above, and this is what we're going to get right here. It's about three inches, so it should be fine, but we wanted to make sure we get as much uh, clearance from the ceiling to the top of this air handler. That way we have plenty of airflow because if you don't have enough return, you won't have enough supply. And this is where the air is sucked in. This is where the air will blow out. This is the supply vent. So we've got some two by four framing here and it is pretty sturdy. We have got the drain right here and then our liquid and vapor line and you can't really see it because it's behind this curtain, which is nice. I'm glad we got this curtain here. So line sets go through this counter and then down and out the hole. Go take a look outside and show you how it looks. The hole's about two and a half, two and three quarters. If you got a hole saw kit, that's what you're going to have to do is two and a half hole, two and a half inch hole at least. So it looks pretty good. Line sets rolled up. We cut them to the length that we need, and then we nitrogen pressure test and vacuum, and you can see where it's coming out right here. We gotta get some 5 8 drain tube, but the electrical is pretty much almost done. All we have to do is wire it into the outdoor unit. So Carolyn has the ability to use a wireless remote controller to operate that Samsung unit and she also has the ability to use her phone. There's an app called Smart Things and the unit has built-in Wi-Fi. So wherever she's at, she'll be able to actually use that unit and turn it on. Say she's out of town but she's coming back into town and she wants to go ahead and turn the heat on. She'll be able to do that. Final day of the install. Hello Cuddles. Take a look inside and see what that wall mount air handler looks like. Let's see what this looks like. All right, let's see. On heating, feels pretty good. And we've got the ability to oscillate the vein here and this vein as well. What are you doing? <laughs> so I'm waiting for you guys to leave. She, <laughs> she's been hiding. Oh, uh, oh, hey, Cuddles. Okay, so jealous. Yeah. Look at there. What'd you do here? Looks like you uh, got some uh, white covering, some tape there, just to make it blend in. Yeah. That's nice. Wire tied the line sets. Beautiful. These are the line sets and the line height cover looks great it's sealed properly we got the hole cover we got the four inch line hide cover coming down to our 90 degree line hide cover fitting and then our line sets come out and they go into the outdoor unit so we got most of it covered and all you have to do is step over it but these will protect the line sets a little bit and then this right here is the drain that comes out from that indoor air handler so Looks really good. I'm here with Carolyn. Carolyn, are you excited to have a new mini split in uh, your Avion travel trailer? I am very excited. Awesome. And what about the aesthetics of the equipment and around the equipment? You talked about doing something different, kind of closing it in. What was your ideas? Well, uh, my nephew is a carpenter, so we're going to put our minds together and put something kind of decorative, but that will still allow the air to flow 
back so the return air will still be ample. Awesome. And I might, you know, hang a little potted plant or something just to make it uh, decorative. That's great. Yeah. Well, it looks great. It's performing well. I'm happy and excited that you gave me the opportunity to do the job. And I can say you're super creative, especially when you come in here, the colors, the plants. It's really nice. It was a pleasure to do your job. Thank you for allowing me to do this. Thank you. So, Thank you. Awesome. I'll definitely uh, pass the word on. Awesome. <laughs> so she's going to come in here, blend in the colors, cover this up, and then around each side, she is going to have some type of louver to pass the air because... We want to make sure we have as much room above this return as possible so that we have good equipment performance. Comment below if you want to see an updated video of what Carolyn does with the covering around the exterior of that indoor wall mount air handler unit. I will do another video and update you and show you the final covering around that unit and how it looks. Carolyn, if you ever plan on moving this travel trailer, what we can do is we can pump down the refrigerant into the outdoor unit, disconnect the lines, take the line hide cover off, and then we can roll the line sets up and then we can strap it right there against the trailer. And then wherever you go, then we can just take it, remount it on the pad, reconnect it, uh, pump it down, nitrogen pressure test, and then we can add our refrigerant back into those line sets. So. Excellent. This can be used um, down the road if you do travel anywhere. Excellent. If there's anybody out there, Carolyn, that's thinking they want to live in a travel trailer, what advice would you give to them if they're if they have a bigger house and they're talking about going to something a little bit smaller? What advice? I would say first of all, if you downsize, you're not going to miss anything. You think you're going to, but you don't. You have everything you need, and just make a plan maybe a two-year plan, three-year plan, five-year plan, stick to it and it can happen. Awesome. I'm, I made it happen and I'm just excited that uh, yes. it's finally happening. And I'm going to have heat and air now. Yes! Woo! Woo! Hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit the like button before you leave. Do not forget to subscribe and smash that bell. Ding! So you know what I'm doing. If you're a homeowner and you need more tips to learn more about saving money or learn more about your air conditioning system and how it works, I've got a playlist for you. Check it out. Links in the description for that playlist. And the playlist is called HVAC Tips for Homeowners. If you're a technician and you need help, you need support, you need to learn more about being a technician, and how to work on air conditioners, and then check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. If you want my help, then click the Join button. Become a member. Let me know in the comments that you joined, and I will send you my email, and that'll lead to contact with me. Go check out my membership levels, because there's membership levels for not only having my phone number, but having a time with me every week for me to help you with your needs. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Homeowners slash Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.